All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the squash and stretch deformer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we have kind of a finished version of what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, animating the cube moving up and down and then animating the squash and stretch deformer to kind of go along with it. Uh, so let's see how we would start something like that. Now, what I have here is a cube uh, that I've just added a few segments on as well as a fillet. These segments are important um, since that is really going to determine kind of the quality of deformation or the shape changing, the squashing and stretching in this case, um, as we'll see. So uh, having additional segments, edges is important when we go to uh, deform our geometry. All right, so we're gonna start here by creating the squash and stretch deformer, which is in our deformers and located right here. Uh, now it's similar to some of our other uh, deformers like the bend, the bold, shear taper twist, all of those work really well for animation purposes. Uh, but I will take the squash and stretch deformer once I've created it and make it a child of our cube. And that's really one of two ways a deformer will work. Um, just to kind of show you really quickly, Oops, wrong one. The factor you can see is what we'll be animating eventually, though it doesn't look good right now. Um, but uh, deformers also work as a peer. So rather than a child, if you put it on the same level as, say, a different object like uh, a sphere right here, uh, you can see it's having an effect on it as well. And this allows you to have a single deformer that works on multiple objects. Now, this is obviously not the best example of it, but it is something to be aware of. So we can go ahead and See this now, I'm going to reset my factor. Uh, you can right click on any one of those arrows and it will reset the value here to the original or the default in whatever kind of um, preset or option you're using for that particular deformer. Now I'm gonna go into uh, say a right view here because I want to kind of show you what this deformer looks like. It's a little bit tricky to see, but it's this line right there that uh, I keep selecting. But what we need to go in is tell the squash and stretch deformer where the bottom of our object is, where the top is, along with um, where the middle is. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to hit fit to apparent. And once again, I'll just kind of move this off to the side a little and um, scale it up just a touch so we can see that's exactly what it did. All right, now it's set the top to the very top of our object. And you can see we can adjust that here if we want to. Um, the center you can adjust and then the bottom is the other part of this. And fit to parent does a great job of doing all of that for us, but to see that uh, you you know obviously want to move it a bit. Um, from there, the main property will animate, as I said, is going to be the factor. And I skipped a, a, the aspect because we want to be able to see this first um, so we can see what some of these other properties do because it changes based on um, you know what we've done with the factor. So you can see this squashes it, this stretches it. It's great that it does it all in one property. However, you can see that it takes our object um, off the ground or it can end up going through the ground. And that is a little bit problematic and will require us to create some additional keyframes um, later on. Now talking about those other properties, um, we have aspect, which is a bit strange. If we're not seeing it in the right view, then we want to switch to say a front view um, and we can see it there, how it's almost kind of the, doing the squashing and stretching here as well. Um, or at least it's doing, making it, it's almost bulging this where uh, it changes it. So it's squashing and stretching, but without changing the height. So that could be an interesting property to animate, but um, honestly, if that was what I was gonna do, I would much rather just use the bulge. Um, factor we've talked about, it's kind of our main property here we're gonna be working with. We also have expand, which kind of allows us to control the strength of that um, squashing or stretching a little bit more, all right? Make it exaggerated inwards a little. And then we have smooth out and smooth in, and you can see how um, that allows us to really kind of add a curve at the beginning, or if we do it down here, at the end. So these are great properties uh, for just adding a little bit more detail, but between these as well as the factor, hopefully you can start to see where it is important to have enough edges in order to control how smooth this uh, we want this to be. If I was to turn down the segments on the y-axis, notice how we start to see the the faceting here, the individual edges. So if I really want this to be smooth, I'm gonna need to turn up my segments, you know, relatively high, right? Something like that if I would like. 
but it does depend how close we're going to see this. Am I going to be right up next to it? Am I going to, am I going to be further away? And I would really use that to determine um, how, how many segments I need on the y-axis for this particular uh, situation. So that's a look at the majority of the properties. I think the only one less is um, curvature, which in, in some ways is just another kind of strength control for this. Um, you can also adjust the smoothing here, the curve, the shape um, type. Uh, really though, you know, square is a, a pretty good one. Cubic, you can see we'll make some changes. Same with quadratic, um, but they all work pretty much the same. What I'm going to do now just to reset everything is click on this drop down and then choose default and that will reset um, in this case my deformer to its original settings. Okay, you, this also allows you to save out presets for different types of objects, you know, whether it's deformers, effectors, you, you name it. But that way we can just kind of start from uh, scratch here and I'm going to start by actually animating the position on this. Okay, um, that way I have something to kind of go back to when um, I add the squash and stretch. So I'm going to start actually at frame 10. That'll make sense um, a little bit sooner. I'm um, just really, I'm leaving some time for a little bit of anticipation, some of the squash and stretch to start. And so I'll go to 10. I'll go to 30, move this up. And then 50, I'll move it down. And I know this was actually at, I think it was 100 uh, to start. So I can just type that in. That's uh, one of the advantages of having an easy to remember number, though I could have just uh, duplicated that keyframe. So now we have this going up and down. And because I know my Cinema 4D keyframes have a slow in, slow out on them, I'm going to go ahead and open up my timeline uh, so that I can select this cube and work with its last keyframe and get rid of that slow in so that uh, it doesn't slow down before it hits the ground. because That's not very realistic. And while this doesn't have to be the most realistic thing ever, you know, uh, I do want it to be at least based in reality. So that's our up and down. Now we can do the squash and stretch. And as I mentioned, we will just be animating the factor property here, starting with 100. I will go to frame five, and I'm gonna squash this down a little bit to say 50%. Okay, notice how it's floating. And, you know, really we can decide whether we wanna do just the squash and, squash and stretch keyframes now, um, and then go back and fix the cube's position or do both at once. I think if you're just starting out, it makes sense to do one or the other. Uh, but for time purposes here, I will do both. So I like this from the squash and stretch point of view. Um, I'm gonna switch to a front view as well, just to make this a little bit easier to see. And then I'll also move this so it's back on the ground. So something like that. And that means I need to keyframe my Y position. It means I need to keyframe my factor. I will then go to frame 10, set the factor back to 100% and keyframe it. That way we get just a little bit of kind of anticipation and that actually is at frame six. So I'm gonna make sure I have both of those things selected and just move that keyframe really quickly. There we go. So frame 10, I can see there's a little bit of cutting through here. We may come back and fix that later on, but for right now I'm okay with it. I will go to say frame 20, which is halfway up and we're gonna squash we're gonna stretch this. So we'll maybe go to say 200%. You can use whatever values you like or that look good. Really, it should be based on how fast this is moving up and then falling back down. So squash and stretch at frame 20, keyframed. I will then go to frame 30, which is when the cube is at its highest, and I'm gonna use the factor to squash this down. So that's looking good. And then what I'll do is come here all the way to say frame, I think it was 50 when it's supposed to hit the ground. And that's when I'm gonna put this to say 225%. Okay, keyframe it, it is going through the ground. So if I want to, I can pull it up, going back to either a front or side view here to make sure it's pretty close to being flat on the ground. And I will keyframe the Y position again. So, I'm just going to add a little bit of back and forth with the squash and stretch. So I'll have it come down here to say 50% again. And make sure I pull this down. Keyframe the Y position, go to frame, say 58. Stretch it out a little bit more. Maybe we'll do 150 or so. 
keyframe it, pull the cube up, and I'm having to make sure I select the cube again before I try and move it. Coordinates, keyframe the Y position. We'll do one more at frame 62 where we just have it go back to its original size. So factor 100, just right clicked on one of the arrows, keyframed it, take the cube, really in the coordinates tab it should be 100, and keyframe it. So now we can take a look at what we have. All right, so not too bad. What we want to do though is take a little bit of a closer look. And so while it's, things look pretty good as we play them back, as we scrub through, that's when we may notice some of those issues like at the beginning here where the cube is going through the ground. So maybe I want to keyframe them and fix them. Um, I'm not going to keyframe everything because you can see I would have to probably go almost frame by frame in some uh, some areas. So it's really, you know, just when it's lifting off as well as coming down. And I'll just do every two here instead of kind of going every other like I probably should. Although, you know what, it's not going to take that long. So I can just do that. You do want to be careful though, because if you recall, I moved that slow in, I removed that slow in, slow out. But because I just overwrote that keyframe, um, I'm pretty sure it added it back. So uh, if I had been smart, I just would have adjusted the keyframe itself and not um, set a whole new one, All right? So it hits the ground at frame 50. I can open up my timeline, go back to F-curve mode. And <laughs> you can see it, well, it tried to do something there. Um, I suspect that's why we may see, actually not too much of an issue there, but I definitely would want to fix that um, so that we end up with something maybe a little bit smoother. Really, probably should just break that handle so that I can keep that downward movement um, and not have too much of a, a change there. So that's looking pretty good. Not perfect though, right? Um, like I said, I don't wanna go through and do every single frame for this, but if I really was trying to make this look as good as possible, that is absolutely what I would do. Um, actually, let's check the beginning. Did something get, yep, it did get messed up there because I do not have a keyframe for the Y position at the very beginning, okay? So one last keyframe and take a look at this one more time. And then what I want to do is a quick comparison. There we go. So I like that, not too bad. I think it looks best coming down. The whole upwards movement is, is it's all right. Um, but yeah, that's how we can work with the squash and stretch deformer. That's what uh, one of the things we can do with it. Now, if you're curious what it would look like had I just animated scale on a cube and not use the squash and stretch deformer, then this is what I would have ended up with. Okay, so, you know, by just using scale, we do get something that is more interesting than had we not animated a second property at all. But um, I would definitely argue the squash and stretch looks significantly better. Um, and so that's really the advantages of these deformers is they just make our objects look so much more interesting. We can give them some life, some personality, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that is ultimately the end result. All right, that will do it for this video. If you could do me a favor and like this, comment if there's anything else you would like to see me make a video of, as well as subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.